All right, what's up guys? VV back with another video. And in today's video, guys, we are going to be starting up a seven-part series, okay? I know, another one of these. Um, but it's something that is pretty important, guys. We're going to be checking out all of OP09. It will be a seven-part series because we will go over all six colors and... Separately, today, we will be going over the six new leaders featured in OP09. And we're going to have a little uh, tier list prediction list as well along the way. Why not, right, since we're on it? I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. Let me let me lay out this video for you guys. First up, we will go through all six of the leaders. I'm going to give them a 1 through 10 rating, or I guess technically like a 0 through 10 grade. 10 being the best grade, 0 being the worst. Um, and I will talk about them, what I think about each one of these leaders, just in a vacuum. I'm not talking about how good it will do in the format, just how strong the leader effect is in and of itself, by itself, for the most part. We'll do some applications to how it will interact with uh, with uh, cards. But remember, guys, we haven't even gone over any of the OP09 cards yet on this channel, right? That is what this entire series will be for. So I, I want to try to judge these without knowledge of other cards, just how good the leader's effect is in a vacuum, like by itself. Okay, guys? So please do not get upset if, if, I, if, if there's a leader you're looking forward to and I give it like an average rating or something. It's not personal. It's nothing like that. The, the deck might still go on to be the best deck in the format, just judging the, the, um, the leader for what I think it's worth, you know, as far as like what the effect does by itself. So that's the first thing we'll do is we'll go over the six leaders. Excuse me. Then from there, we will actually hop over to the tier maker and uh, we will make a tier list maker for um, where I think all of the leaders are going to line up. And I mean all of the leaders, guys. We're doing a full tier list today, even OP08 and OP09. Of course, OP08 will be in reference to the West post bands and OP09 will be post bands for the East, obviously. Okay. All right, so, so we'll go over to the tier list maker, and then we will finish off with just a fun, quick game on the sim of, um, of an L. Okay, it's, it's a different list than I think you're used to seeing. It's, it's not your standard list, okay, guys? And then we'll finish off in that way. We'll check out the deck list and wrap it up like that. All right, so guys, you know what you're getting into. Let's do this. I will have everything timestamped in the general description. I will have all relevant links down in the comment section. So, you know, and all, all the, um, any kind of, like, deck list we go over will be down there as well. All right. As usual, if you have any comments, questions, or suggestions, please do not hesitate to put them in the comment section below. And real quick, but you know, before we get into this, a lot of people might be thinking like, well, why are we doing this right now? We're just now about to get OP08 in the West. That's a legitimate question. Here's the thing though, guys. In the game of One Piece, we are three months behind or three and a half months or whatever it is behind um, the East, okay? So with that in mind, th we are already starting to see just you know just this past weekend we're already starting to see the very first results for op09 in the east so if we don't start tackling this now we start to fall behind new players might start feeling overwhelmed and i get it you know hey it might be overwhelming to learn all these new cards but don't worry guys i'm gonna have this entire video set up in like a uh, you know in a playlist style where you can just send this to friends to watch you know so they can call, get caught up at their own leisure you know very easily and um they could choose whichever color, color they want to go through, you know, one by one per day. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. So let's go ahead and dive into this, guys. First up, we got Shanks. Okay. So we're going to start off. We're just going to go, going to go in order, guys. Red, green, blue, purple, black, uh, yellow. Okay. First up is Shanks. Shanks is a 5,000 power, 5 life, red leader, 4 emperors, red haired pirates type. And the effect is this. This effect can be activated when your opponent attacks. Period. Give up to one of your opponent's leaders or characters cards minus 1,000 power during this turn. So that once per turn, it is once per turn, of course. <laughs> that would be crazy otherwise. Uh, then it'd just be broken, right? Just continuously do it again and again and again. But uh, but no, this, uh, this is a once per turn that's very powerful. And I think it's a lot better than a lot of people have been giving it credit for. You know, I, I like to read things here and there, whether it be on, you know, on the Discord or just comment sections, you know, on YouTube. And guys, I don't think this leader is as bad as some people are thinking it is. Because think of it like this. <clears throat> excuse, excuse me. So I'm gonna I'm gonna try to keep this like within a vacuum, not even doing like special applications. Because guys, there are special applications. Like, listen to this. Okay, this, this is very technical. Imagine you have a red hawk in your deck, right? That pops a four thousand power character or less, and it's a two cost four K counter. Imagine your opponent swings at you for seven or eight. Okay, no problem. I will first use my once per turn now that now that you attacked. I will give your, your 5,000 power character over there, like let's just say it's Borsalino, right? We'll give that 5,000 power character over there minus 1,000 power for the turn. Not the attacking character, the character over there on your sideline who's like, you know, who's waiting his turn to attack. We'll give him minus 1,000 power for the turn. Now, I'll activate my Red Hawk, 
you know, assuming I have two Dawn, of course. I'll activate Red Hawk. I'll pop the 4,000 power character I just, you know, I just nerfed. And then I'm going to get out of this attack. Like, that is a technical way of using this, but that is one possible way, right? Not even going over the technical stuff. Just imagine this. This card, or excuse me, this effect is never dead for any attack. Like, imagine they swing for five, okay? You just completely counter their attack. You go, okay, leader effect, <laughs> next, right? Say they attack for six. Leader effect, I give you a 1k counter. It should have been a 2k counter. Say they attack for seven. Leader effect, I give you a 2k counter. Guys, that is way stronger than you might think. That generates card value over the course of the game. Think about it. If you're a blocking, let's just say you, you stop a single 5,000 power attack every single turn with this effect. Okay. Well, that is plus one card every single time, if you think about that. Very, very powerful. I'm actually going to give this card a 7.5 out of 10. Some people might think that this leader is not that good. Not saying, again, guys, we're not saying the deck will not be good because there's a lot of new cards we have to talk about coming out of red. It's not to say the deck that this leader's in will not be good. The effect itself, though, I think is a 7.5 out of 10, and I don't think that's bad or good. I think it's just a very solid effect. Okay, you guys tell me what y'all think in the comment section below. We'll check out the leader alt art real quick. Very cool looking. I'm not going to talk too much about it, but this looks very nice. Okay, let's keep going, guys. Next up, we have Lim or Lean. Someone help me out in the comment section below. I'm not sure how to say this. This is a four life, 5,000 power, green, purple, dual color leader for the Odyssey type. The first part of this effect, I'm not a big fan of, but I'm sure it's good. there's going to be a theme associated with it. Your character cards are played rested. Then it also has activate main once per turn. You may rest three of your Dawn cards and then add up to one Dawn card from your Dawn deck and rest it and play up to one Odyssey type character card with a cost of five or less from your hand. So you're ramping out a five or less and you're ramping a Dawn. You're ramping out a Dawn and a five or less. I do think this is very strong, all for a three Dawn investment. Like you're just going to rest three Dawn and then you're, it just has to be an Odyssey type character though. So again, I try not to consider cards with the leader, but you can't really ignore cards that are going to obviously go with this leader because it's built around a specific type. Um, I'm just going to say that a lot of people are going to probably be upset. I'm going to give this a 5.5 out of 10. It's slightly above average, okay? Because you are going to be able to ramp a Dawn, even if you don't even make an Odyssey type deck, right? Because you can just, like, say you're just running a Don Quixote Pirates deck, right? <laughs> I'm just giving an example. Uh, or, or Supernova, whatever. It doesn't matter. Like, it's, like say you're, you're building a deck that's just totally not even Odyssey. Well, you can still activate main once per turn, rest three of your Dawn cards, add up to one Dawn card, add up to one Dawn card from your Dawn deck and rest it, and then play up to one Odyssey type card. So, so if you don't have one, just don't play it. You know what I mean? So it does at least always have a ramp. So I'll even give it a 6 out of 10. I'll even up the score to a 6 out of 10 since it always has a ramp. But here's the thing I don't like about this, and I'm very picky when I grade leaders, guys, because I'm looking for, like, the universal nature of it. Like, how universal is the effect? I call it generic. How generic is the effect? This one's not really that generic at all, right? In fact, it's punishing me by playing characters out every turn because they're going to come into play rested. And I'm not saying there won't be any support to help that out. I'm just saying... It is forcing certain certain things where I have to play out cards rested from my hand. And it has to be Odyssey type cards that I'm cheating out with the effect. So that I'm not a big fan of. I'm going to go with a 6 out of 10. I don't think it's a bad leader. And the leader might be very good because I'm sure it's going to receive tons and tons of support for this Odyssey type, right? This is a new type they really want to push. Um, I think there are some Odyssey cards already in the game. If, if you know, I'm just trying to think off the top of my head. I'm pretty sure there are some Odyssey cards already in the game. Um, but I don't know how relevant they are to what this leader does. So we'll have to see. We'll have to uh, we'll have to see and uh, see how things go. But overall, what the leader does, I'm going to go 6 out of 10. That's just what I think about it personally. Okay, we'll check out the alt art. Really big fan of the alt art. Look at that eye color. That is an excellent, beautiful green, like a very soft green for the eyes with even a shade of purple, it looks like, at the bottom right here. A little miniature art review for you guys, a little miniature art critique. Uh, but big fan, really big fan of this alt art. Looks really good. Okay, let's move on to the third leader. We have Buggy. Okay, we got Buggy, guys. This is a 5 life, 5,000 power blue, mono-colored leader. It is a 4 Emperor's cross guild type. And let's see the effect. The effect is you may rest 5 of your Dawn cards and trash 1 card from your hand. That's not once per turn, by the way. Play up to 1 cross guild type character card from your hand. Hang on a second. I don't know why. Was was Lim? Lim's was once per turn. I was, I was about to say, wait, wait a minute here. Wait a minute. That would have been crazy. 
But no, that was once per turn. But this one is not once per turn, guys. And if you uh, if you rest five dawn and trash a card from your hand, you can play up to one cross guild type character card from your hand, no cost restriction. So man, this card would be guys. This card would be so crazy if you could cheat out a ten cost for five, right? You know, a wink, wink. I'm making like an obnoxious wink if you can't see through my glasses glare. But um, yeah, okay. This one I have is slightly better than Lim or Lim, however you say that name. Here's why. Yes, it does cost five Dawn. Yes, you have to trash a card whenever you do this. But you're cheating out a potential 10 cost character. For Lim or Lim, she's cheating out a five cost character at the maximum. This guy starts at a five cost for the most part, right? Because otherwise you wouldn't use the effect if it costs less than five. Um, you could just play it out normally. But this is going to allow you to potentially cheat out two 10 cost characters in one turn. That's not even locked to activate uh, main once per turn. You can do it twice in one turn. Yes, you do have to trash a card, and yes, you do have to spend 5 Dawn, and there's a restriction where it is only on cross guild type characters. But still, guys, you have to look at top-end potential for something like this, and, and if you can somehow play out two 10-cost characters in one turn, guys, that, that by itself is extremely good. I'm still not going to go crazy with the rating, because like I said, it is limited. You have to trash a card, you have to tap 5 Dawn down, and you have to push out a cross guild character, so you're very limited, like how Lim will be, will be stuck with Odyssey, for the majority of the deck to get the full effect, you'll be st stuck with a large majority of your deck being cross guild for buggy. I'm going to give it a 7 out of 10. I don't think it's good. I don't think it's bad or anything like that. I just think it's very... I think it has a lot of potential. Okay? Let's look at the uh, alt art. Very cool. <laughs> very nice alt art. I really like that. Okay, let's see what's next. We're going over to purple, I believe. Yes. Okay. Now, all right, on to the fourth leader, right? We've gone over Shanks, we've gone over Lim, we've gone over Buggy, now we're on Luffy. Luffy looks really interesting, guys. Let's read this and talk about it. This is a 5,000 power, 4 life, purple, black, dual color leader, 4 emperors type with straw hat crew. The effect is Dawn times 1, all of your characters gain plus 1 cost. Seems good, right? This seems really, really good. Your turn, once per turn, when 2 or more Dawn cards on your field are returned to your Dawn deck, Add up to one Dawn card from your Dawn deck and set it as active. And add up to one additional Dawn card and rest it. So um, for those who are not aware, there is a Q&A out on this already on the OP09 stuff. And yes, it, for anyone who might have the question, because I had the question, what if I do like two queens in a turn? Like what if I you know play out one queen and then play out a second queen where it's two Dawn altogether, but it's separate cases of one? That does not work if I read the rules correctly. It has to be something that returns two or more at a time, at, at one time, uh, or else it does not trigger properly. Uh, but either way, there's going to be a lot of stuff to do that. I'll, I'll just tell you guys right now. I know it's like a spoiler on spoiler here. It's like spoilers on spoilers here. But here's the thing, guys. That effect is going to be able to ramp you down very, very frequently. Like, let's just think of one example we already know of. The 10 cost, um, 10 cost uh, purple Luffy, the secret rare, the gear five Luffy. Okay, well, I can return all my Dawn back by playing him out, right? All 10 Dawn, I've got a 10 cost 12k, and now I'm going to get two Dawn back into play from this. One rested, one active. Well, now I can rest another Dawn to uh, activate my 10 cost 12k's effect and get another Dawn. And all of your characters gain plus one cost. That's not the worst thing in the world. That first effect, Dawn times one, all of your characters gain plus one. That's actually not bad, guys. That's actually pretty decent. Especially now that Black has lost the uh, stage, like the well, they they'll still have a stage like uh, Marine Headquarters if you're running a Navy, uh, some type of Navy themed deck. But for you know any's lobby, plus one cost is massive now that that's gone. That that's massive, guys. Way way crazier than you might think. Um, so as far as this effect goes, here's the thing. I, I'm trying to be fair, guys. I'm trying to be completely straightforward. Like where it's like, okay, I don't want to like compare all these other cards with this. But any effect that ramps Dawn, remember what we were just talking about with Lim, okay? If it's ramping Dawn, I think it's good. This also has built-in protection. I would, I'm going to have to give this a 7.5 out of 10. It's not crazy. Again, this, this list, this leader, we're going to talk about the tier list after this, right, guys? Th this leader might be insane. We're going to talk about some cards after this. However, the actual effect in and of itself, this your turn once per turn, the ability to return to Dawn and get the two Dawn back where it, where it stops the, uh, it basically negates the, the, the Dawn um, loss really strong and it's actually ran it's, it's not ramping you know this in particular is not ramping you a dawn there are effects that will be able to um this effect is not ramping you a dawn but think about it you're returning two dawn cards 
and you're not just getting them back, you're getting one back rested and one back active. So now you're, you're getting an additional attack for the turn. So I'm gonna give this a seven to 7.5 out of 10 very easily. I think this is a great leader effect, but I'll say this right now, guys, it's not the leader effect alone that's gonna make this, this uh, leader very powerful. It's gonna be the supporting cast, but we'll talk about that later. Uh, really good stuff here, let's check out, guys, Guys, look at this alt art. That is incredible. His head is a perfect circle. Look at this, guys. Just incredible. Uh, that huge Cheshire cat uh, grin. That the teeth are like touching the ears. Uh, he's got, you know, he's got his hand on his head up here. It, this is just incredible, right? This is just really solid. Looks great. Okay. Next up, we've got Nico Robin. Okay. 5,000 power, uh, 4 life, purple, yellow, straw hat crew, banish. Banish, period, okay? And then whenever you're attacking, you may trash one card with a trigger from your hand and add up to one Dawn card from your Dawn deck and, and set it as, act, as a rest, and rest it, excuse me, and rest it. So guys, you're gonna probably be like, what, how are you gonna give this rating? But this is an easy 8.5 to nine out of 10 for what the leader does. That doesn't mean it will be a better deck than Purple Black Luffy. It doesn't mean anything like that. I'm just telling you guys right now, it might be, we don't, we don't know guys. We have to see how things uh, turn out in the East. But I'm telling you guys right now, banish on a leader, period. So if I swing for five, I'm either tr I'm trashing the top card of your life or you're giving me a one or two K counter from your hand. That That is forcing things, guys. Th this leader effect by itself is just absolutely incredible. And then the win attacking, it is semi-limited. You have to trash a trigger character, or excuse me, a trigger card from your hand in order to get the dawn ramp. But okay, we are running yellow right this is a purple yellow leader so that's not exactly going to be impossible to do but here's the thing this leader is good without that effect and i mean i don't know i don't want to say it's that that effect's not good to ramp dawn so we have dawn ramp and banish built into a into a leader with yellow and purple as the combined colors yellow has all the life gain we need and trigger support that we need purple excuse me guys purple also has some decent stuff as well when it comes to life gain like uh, for example, okay, well, no, she's not Baroque Works. I thought they might give it like a former Baroque Works or something like that. I don't know. Maybe I have to reread the eight cost uh, crocodile. But the point is this. You have all the yellow life gain, and then purple now has a very strong life gain card called uh, nine cost Lin Lin, right? That bounces back a six or less, lets you gain a life <laughs> and establish a 9k body. So you've got all this life gain. You have Banish built into your deck. This is a leader I cannot, or uh, built into your leader, I should have said. This is a leader I cannot wait to play. I want to literally swing seven, attach to Dawn, swing seven every turn. That's going to be my strategy. Just, you know, pure triggers, pure straw hat support. And I, I want to swing seven every single turn with this leader. So you have to give it your top life card or you know, trashing it, trashing your top life card, or you have to give me two cards out of hand. It just seems good to me. It, it just seems really, really strong. I'm a huge fan of this leader. I'm going to give it a nine out of 10. I think the leader effect in and of itself in a vacuum, guys. Again, we're not talking about how good it will do in the meta. We'll have to see how it does in the meta. I think it's going to do all right, by the way. But I think this leader effect is incredible. Banish. It's just built in banish. That, that's, all, that's all I had to read. You know, that's all I had to know to know that, like, wow, this card's insane. I think I gave, I can't remember what I gave Green Yellow Yamato back in OP05 or 6. I can't even remember when Green Yellow Yamato came out. Now, guys, I'm sorry. I think it was OP05 or OP06, whatever it was. Green yellow, green yellow Yamato just has double attack, which is not bad. But hey, they're drawing those cards. It's the banish that you give Yamato with something like an Onami that makes it absolutely insane. Because if you do a double attack into someone's life, that's two potential triggers or two cards they're going to draw, whatever. Okay, and they can play around that. But banish, you're not playing around banish. You, you, you can't. That, that's the thing. You can't play around it. I mean, I mean, excuse me. You have to play around it in terms of like countering out or blocking or whatever because you cannot even accept that hit or you start losing triggers. You start losing card draw from your life. You lose life. <laughs> it's just devastating. It is a devastating effect. Cannot wait to play with this. And then the potential, the ups, you know, the up, you know, the potential to trash a trigger card to start ramping Dawn as well. Guys, I... I don't have enough good things to say about this leader. I'm just going to be honest, guys. I don't have enough good things to say about this leader. I'm a huge fan. And these are, I mean, I do play a lot of yellow. For those who follow the channel, you know, yellow is like one of my main colors next to black. Uh, but I love this card. Like, I absolutely love this leader. And I will be playing this at some point in the very near future. Uh, as soon as the sim is updated, you'll probably see uh, one of my first choices to run through the ringer is probably going to be Nico Robin. But that's hard to say. We've got a lot of leaders to play with now, guys, when OB09 fully updates on the sim and all that. Okay. <clears throat> 9 out of 10. 8.5 is the lowest I'll give this. Incredible leader effect. Again, in a vacuum, guys. In a vacuum. 
Okay. Oh, and the uh, I, I'm not a huge fan of the alt art. Don't don't get mad at me. I'm sorry. It is what it is. I li I like Nico Robin. Nico Robin's a cool looking character. But I'm not a huge fan of this alt art. I think they zoomed in too much. I'd like to see more of the hat. I actually like like notice when we go backwards. This is this is awesome. Th this this piece right here is just awesome. But check out the hat, man. Like that's like one of the coolest parts about this. And you zoom in, we don't even get to see the full hat. You know, and on top of that, I like how they did the, you know, the, the, the shade is covering the eye. You know, she's giving you that, that side, that side glance. I really like that, but I wish there was a little more of the hat in this. Either way, very cool looking piece. Okay. We got one more leader, right guys? Hmm. Which, what's, what's the last leader? Marshall D. Teach. Now I have gone over some of these leaders in a previous video, but Hey, now I'm actually fully grading them and all that good stuff. This is a 5,000 power, five life, four emperors, black beard, pirates type leader. Uh, the color is black as well. The effect is your on play effects are negated. You do, you, you're not ever going to get an on play effect. H hang on a second. <laughs> uh, okay, I have to save this for later. Uh, how funny would it be if you're in a mirror match versus another Blackbeard and they drop the 10 cost 12k Blackbeard on you? I'm sorry, I know these are spoilers on spoilers, guys. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. But it's too funny of an example not to give. And what if they... Uh, turn off your leader effect for the turn and you have like a random on play slash when attacking in there or something. That, that would just be so funny. I don't know. Okay. Y'all tell me what y'all think in the comment section below. That could be very interesting. If, if it works like that, I could be wrong. All right. But anyway, let's get back to what this, this leader does. Everybody, you know, lock in, lock in. Here we go. The effect is your on play effects are negated. So, hey, you're not going to be running Gecko Moria in this deck. Unless, like I said, unless, like I said, if, if there's some type of tech choice in the future where it's like, huh, maybe against another, um, you know, if, if Marshall D. Teach becomes an extremely, extremely strong deck in the format, like a lot of people think it will, maybe you'll have one or two Gecko Morias in your deck for the turn they drop their 10 calls 12k on you, and then you just, oh, okay, so so all my effects are negated on here. <laughs> okay, drops down the the, uh, the Gecko Moria, and, you know, the, the on-play effects aren't negated anymore, if it works like that. We'll, we'll have to see. That could be very funny, very interesting tech choices. And, hey, against all the other matchups, you just trash it for, like, the draw trash effects. Could be very cool. Okay. Now, activate main. You may trash one card from your hand. Your opponent's on play effects are negated until the start of your opponent's next turn. There you go. So he's saying, I don't get any on play effects. Neither do you. We're going to create a special arena. We're going to create a special game here where you know it's me versus you, and none of us are going to get on play effects. It's going to be fair, right? You know, wink, wink. It's going to be very fair. I don't get on play effects, and neither do you. <clears throat> Excuse me. Guys, that is... For those who are new to One Piece, on play effects are in every single deck currently. <laughs> I don't think there is a deck in the game that has existed that does not have on play effects in them. I could be wrong. You guys tell me if there's one that, like, an obvious one I might have missed, but I don't think they exist because on play effects are so powerful in this game. The closest thing to their to there being like a deck that might not have on play is maybe some type of rush deck that just it's just running um, rush. I don't know. We'll have to see. Either way, very, very powerful effect here. It should not be um, ignored. This this cannot be ignored. This is a very, very powerful effect. Uh, shutting down on play effects for the entire turn just by trashing a card from hand. Yes, th that, is a, that is a steep cost. You're trashing a card every time. However, there are going to be ways to draw those cards back. You know, I've seen decks experimenting with uh, Monchery. I've seen some decks. There's some cards within the Blackbeard, you know, uh, Pirates theme that also help with uh, hand, you know, drawing cards to hand. Uh, but... Long story short, this is a very powerful effect. I'm going to give this a 9 out of 10. This is this is a 9 out of 10, okay? Yes, you do not get on play effects, but neither, neither does your opponent. And that's what makes this so strong. I would give it a 10 out of 10, but you are trashing a card every single turn, and you don't get on play effects either. So it's kind of a, I, I give a little bit. You know, I, I It's like I, I'm, I'm having to give up a little bit, but I'm taking a lot. You know what I mean? Or I might say that backwards. I'll take a little bit, but I'm giving a lot. I don't know. Something <laughs> I messed that up. Y'all get what I'm trying to say. Long story short, let me let me summarize that clumsy example there. I have to sacrifice a little tiny bit, but I get I'm getting a whole lot out of it. You see what I mean? Okay. And then we gotta see, guys. Okay, the best alt art probably out there, man, for 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 the leader alt arts, especially from OP09. <laughs> this is incredible. This one is so good. It just looks so intimidating. This guy looks maniacal, right? Like compare this. I, I know we're doing we're doing a quick little art critique, I guess, guys. 
like this is more of like someone just laughing like they're just laughing their butt off right like like you know rofl right <laughs> it's like boomer talk right rolling on the floor laughing he's just laughing so hard eyes are closed this guy's just having a good time whoever this guy is luffy right but this one is maniacal like one eye he's got the crazy eye on one of them the teeth are you know half his teeth are missing you know not half but you know what i mean like three of his teeth are missing and it's just like th that that gaze is so intense this is this is so good I'm, I'm such a big fan of this altar okay nine out of ten i think this leader effect is incredible absolutely shuts them down just like banish does guys banish shuts down life Marshall D. Teach shuts down on plays. That is extremely, extremely powerful. Okay. All right. And I think that's it. Let me just uh, go through the last two pages here. I'm like 99% sure. And we will go through all of these. Don't worry um, throughout the week. Okay. Very cool. Now let's go ahead, go ahead and go over to the tier maker. Okay. Full screen. I'm going to try to go through this pretty quickly because we have a lot to talk about. Let me get us uh, adjusted here. And where's my uh, face cam? There we go. Let me move this up to here. I'm going to make my face pretty small for this. You don't have to see much of me for this. Okay, let's go through this. I'm going to try and go, go through this pretty quickly here. Notice how I have things divided on the left here. Red at the top is just like meta. That's like, see that is like S tier. Like these are the top decks in the format, or at least the top contenders. Competitive means it might not be like the absolute best deck, but it actually, it, it can still like sneak games at locals and stuff like that. Maybe even top, get, get into top placings in, um, in regionals and stuff like that maybe not win regionals but it can like find its way in the top areas of regionals sleeper it needs work maybe one day someone will figure it out and do really good with it maybe it just needs someone to master the deck we'll have to see right casual just means don't expect much let him cook is you guys are gonna have to explain that one to me right like that mean that's a leader that i'm thinking okay it needs it needs some help now Okay, so we'll start off with blue here. Whoops, let me see. Okay, so for blue, I think this is falling under casual. Excuse me, blue. This is crocodile. This is ST03 crocodile. Um, this leader has like consistently fallen down a rank every single set since since probably Sakazuki. Um, it is what it is. I think it's just fallen under complete casual now. If it's like your favorite leader and you just like bouncing stuff, you know, it, it's a weird leader how it's um how it has like a dawn minus to do the bouncing effect it's like that's kind of a purple thing you could tell that's when bandai was still trying to figure things out long story short though i think the leader still um it, it's a five thousand power five life leader and it can bounce characters you know at some point in the game so it's still pretty decent i, I, don't, I don't think it's fully under the let him cook thing just yet who knows maybe next set we'll have to see okay someone's got to explain uh blurple blurple uh croc to me because this I've heard good things about it. I know uh, the Straw Hat crew, if you guys uh, check out their channel, um, Chris is the master of uh, Blurple Croc. We'll see if he can ever uh, fully unlock this leader. All right, this is the one too. Okay, people have been saying a lot of good things about Ace. I'm going to try and pick up the pace, by the way, guys, because we have 85 leaders to go through. Um, I've heard people say a lot of good things about Ace. I just, I don't see it, guys. I'm sorry. And I'm not saying he's bad. That's why I have him under Sleeper. I would like to put him under Casual, but people have been saying a lot of stuff about him. We're going to have to see, guys. Okay, I think Kaido has fallen off under Sleeper. Like, I thought this was going to do really well for a while, and it just never showed much results. Who knows? Maybe the West will be able to uh, unlock it fully. Uh, real quick, I will adjust the places on here once we uh, go through the whole list. Hody, Sleeper, something to be said there. I think Eustace Kid has fully fallen under Casual at this point. If you're going to run Green Supernova, you just run Bonnie. I think it's just strictly better. Arlong, um, this is a Sleeper as well. King, let him cook, Okay. Shanks, let him cook. Odin, Blurple Kaido, we're gonna go under casual. Sorry guys, I know, I know that probably hit a lot of people. That was like a, that was like a, you know, getting punched in the stomach there. It is what it is, guys. Um, Mo Gecko Moria is absolutely still competitive. Now, oh, one more thing. This is for OP08, guys. First, we're talking about OP08. We'll talk about OP09 after the OP08 stuff. And this is post-ban OP08 for the West. Iceberg, um, I, I mentioned how he's decent. He is somewhere between casual and sleeper. I don't think he's competitive. I think there's something here with like the sleeper thing, but I think ultimately he's still kind of under casual. Sorry, guys. I even mentioned him in a recent video when I was trying out a new red, yellow Sabo list. Uh, I think it was like either yesterday's video or the, or the one before where this deck was kind of solid. It's, it's kind of decent, but it's still just because you can't swing with the leader. It just never feels, I never feel threatened. Uh, Katakuri is... I'm, I'm going to put it under competitive. I just think I just think it is, guys. I'm sorry. I just think this this leader is going to be competitive for a while. Arlong, more on the casual side. 
Same thing with Red Yellow Law. This might be under Sleeper. I know some people are probably like, this just won a tournament at the beginning of OP07. It's like, yeah. And that was an incredible pilot, man. That was an incredible pilot for sure. But I'm, I'm going to put this under casual uh, for the time being. Who knows? You guys tell me what y'all think in the comment section below. Uh, Blue Luffy. I, I almost want to put this under Let Him Cook, but it's at least, it has a lot of card draw. I'm going to put it, under, put it under Let Him Cook. And I can see some people already, guys, people are like, I want a tournament, you know, a locals with this leader or that leader. I'm not saying you can't. I'm not saying you can't win locals. It's just, you know, for this the stuff all the way at the top here, I'm considering this like the, the decks to look out for where it's like this is going to be a top deck in the format. And I might make some adjustments as we go through the list, so bear with me. Okay, I think Edward Newgate is at the very end of competitive. Red, purple, Uda. This is getting very close now, guys. Red, purple, Uda is actually getting very close. It might be at the top of casual or at the very uh, low end of sleeper. Like, it's just waiting to be unlocked. I'm going to put this uh, Luffy under ca Luchi under casual, guys. Why not just run the other Luchi at this point? Who knows, actually. Now that the stage is gone, who knows? Maybe there's going to be an Eridor Luchi. We'll have to see. Uh, red, green. Um, red, green, Luffy. We're going to put under uh, casual. I almost want to put under let him cook. Uh, but no, it's pretty good for a casual deck, to be honest. Um... Rebecca is going at the top of Sleeper. This is just waiting to be figured out. Uh, Lin Lin goes straight... No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, Black Yellow Lin Lin. This one's going to be under... Um, no, I, I got to put it on the top of Casual. This is the lowest I've ever rated Black Yellow Lin Lin, guys. Y'all know this was my baby. It hurt me to put it right here. That, that, that hurt a lot. Bonnie, absolutely mad up. Zoro is going to be towards the tail end of Competitive as well. Uh, we'll talk about that more later, I think. Green, purple, Dofi. I think this could be a sleeper. We'll have to see. Now, that I will say this. I'll put it towards the end of uh, sleeper because this is... Uh, for those who don't know what sleeper is, I probably should have explained that, right? It, it's just waiting to be unlocked. Like this, man, this is probably way better than people realize. It just needs the right pilot and the right um, matchups and the right, um, you know, tech choices. Uh, but anyway, I think green, purple, Dofi, now that red, purple, law is gone, like... Red Purple Law gave Green Purple Dofi some type of chance to, like, make it in there. But then I think Luchi just demolished it. I, I could be wrong. You guys tell me what y'all think in the comment section below. Dofi, meta. And I will say it's... Okay, we're going to talk about going into OP08.5. Let me leave it at the top of competitive first, and we'll talk about that. Isho is very much um, a sleeper. I think it's a sleeper. Bello Betty, competitive. Dragon at the... I almost want to say... I'm probably going to move Dragon down to casual, guys. I know a lot of people won't like that, but it is what it is. Okay, obviously, whatever whatever Dragon is, I, I put uh, Luffy 1 under whatever Dragon is. Purple Yellow Croc, he's up there, guys. He's just waiting. Casual, I you know, I've seen some people talking about Garp lately. Maybe I'll put under Sleeper. We'll, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. Enel, I think he's up there in the meta list. Purple Luffy, Luffy at the end of competitive. Hannibal, this is casual. Um, Ivan Kov, let him cook. Kinemon, let him cook. It's, there's some Kinemon diehard, like, diehard fans out there who are going to be, like, unsubbing to my channel. I hope not, but I'm saying, like, there's some Kinemon diehards out there. I just, I'm sorry, guys, I, I don't see it currently. Rosanante, I see as casual. I'll, I'll at least put Kinemon under casual. I will at least put him uh, under casual. Prone is up there, uh, somewhere between sleeper and, and uh, at the end of competitive. I'll put at competitive for now. Nami is, is meta. I mean, I, I'm not the one who, you know... I'll at least put her competitive. I know I know some people are going to get mad about that. So this is a absolute um, let him cook deck. The uh, ST, the other uh, Luffy deck. Not S ST14 is actually somewhere in the sleeper category. This one's moving up the list, guys. But the other one from, I think it's ST09 or something along those lines. I can't remember. Uh, maybe ST08 or something. Uh, this this Luffy here, it's, it's the one that came with the Shanks with it and the Uda. It, no, sorry, guys. Okay, Reiju's up there in the meta. Um, Lin Lin, the five life, I put it right above, I finally put it above the black yellow Lin Lin because it's just because it has five life and I, I feel like that's more important currently. Luchi, meta. Magellan, let him cook. Boa, um, I'm going to put it, whatever, whatever, uh, Dofi is, I put Boa one under that, whatever it ends up being for the most part. Queen, casual, I have seen some people messing with this, we'll have to see what happens. I think Green Yellow Yamato is competitive. I think Smoker. We're going to talk about this again. Once we get to OP08.5, I'll, I'll try to remember to, to move this one. We'll adjust the list then. Foxy, casual. Zephyr, let him cook. Green Blue Zanji, let him cook. SC06 uh, Sakazuki. OP09, or excuse me, ST. I think this is SC09 uh, Yamato. Th whatever this Ood is from, some kind of promo, let him cook. Uh, Red Black Sabo. This could be a sleeper now that uh, that Lucci is is becoming better and better. Vega is definitely a sleeper. Whoop, there we go. 
he is just waiting ready to go i'm gonna put him at the end of sleeper he's just waiting for his chance to pop out and like do really well but i think with red purple law gone i do think we're gonna see uh new rush decks pop up that could actually take the place uh, of what red purple law was doing to vega and i think it'll keep vega in check but but vega there's some that that deck is very annoying uh vivi going under casual Black, yellow, Kairos, letting them cook for now. Red, green, Odin, I think, is a sleeper. There, there's always something to this deck, I feel like. Uh, Uda, competitive. Blue, black, Sakazuki, the, um, the uh, you know, what is it called? The the promo one. Uh, we'll put under let him cook. Red, purple, law, promo, let him cook. Uh, blue, these are the, uh, th these are banned, the two right here. So red, purple, Luffy. This is going up in the competitive range. Um, red, purple, let me, let me put it down here for now. Red, purple, kid gets much better in OP09. RP Kid actually gets decent in OP09. I'll put him down here so I can try to remember to move him when I talk about OP09. Zanji, Sleeper. Okay, Black, Yellow, Luffy, meta. Ah, it's not letting me go up. Hang on. There we go. Black, Yellow, Luffy is up in the meta. Red, Purple, Laws Band. I already said that. Uh, Blue, Yellow, Ace. I'm sorry. I just, I can't see this going above Sleeper. I just, I just can't, guys. Red, Yellow, Sabo is definitely competitive. Red, Green, Chopper, um, Casual. Now, now we're at the OP08 card. Uh, yes, OP08 now. Let's talk about some OP08 cards. That Chopper was the first one. I think Pudding might go under competitive. Guys, at the very low end of competitive, or at least a sleeper, you know, it's getting close. Red, blue, Marco, we're going to put him at the top of sleeper. He's getting close. Calgara's decent for competitive. Hang on, we'll, uh, we'll go back up in a minute. Uh, Purple, Black, King. We got to wait for someone to figure him out. Um, Carrot. Uh, I'll put him under... I, I always put it under casual because I would just run Bonnie, but we'll leave it there for now. I think Zanji, uh, or excuse me, Red, red uh, Sanji will probably be competitive, but maybe not. We'll, we'll put it at the top end of Sleeper. Purple, Black, we're going to put this under. Uh, purple, purple, Black, Luffy. Okay, sorry. I, I got ahead of myself there. Hang on, let me grab this card back down. Now, okay, so this is what I'm thinking for, um, the, e, for the West for OP08, and I'm going to do some adjustments now. Let me adjust my face cam. I'm, there we go. Okay, so I think like in the top five spots up here for meta, I do think that probably Lucci, whoops, trying to move it over. We're having, we're having some trouble here, guys. I got to scooch up a little bit. So I think Lucci is probably at the top next to black, yellow, um, Luffy. And then like the rest kind of just falls in the line here. And then, okay, here's what we need to do. I'm actually going to move Gecko up. So it like frees up some space here because he probably should be there anyway. And I'm going to put, I'm going to, I'm going to, um, what's it called? Promote someone out of the let him cook area. Which one is it going to be? Who's going to get to not be in the let let him cook? We'll make it this uh, this Luffy. There we go. Now it's much easier for us to see too. Okay, so for the top meta stuff, I do think Luchi, Black Yellow Luffy, Green Bonnie, Yellow Anel, Blurple Reju, and Gecko Moria. I do think these will be the top dogs for us over here in in, in the West for OP08. I just, I do think that, and probably in this order somehow, I, Gecko Moria is the one rogue one I'm not sure how to say, but one thing is for sure, now let's talk about how things will change going into OP08.5, and guys, these are just my predictions, please don't get mad at me or anything like that, these are just my personal predictions, and remember, Red Purple Law banned, and the stage banned for, uh, for, uh, Luchi. At that point, I do think that Dofi pushes his way into this area of the of the top meta contenders. And at that point, of course, Boa will probably sneak directly at the end of um, competitive. Uh, purple, yellow, pudding, I don't think will change too much. L let me actually at least adjust these competitive ones. I'm going to put Uda, Nami, Katakuri. I think uh, red, yellow, Sabo is going to be much closer up here. Maybe like right here. Purple, Luffy, I like that. Okay, I, I do like this, though, but I'll put green, black, Perona a little ahead of it. May, actually, no, I don't think green, yellow, Yamato passes it then. Okay, right here. So this is roughly what I think it should be for meta and for competitive going into OP08. This is not OP09. This is OP08.5, we'll call it. Uh, and at this point, I do think that Smoker moves up a notch. And also, wait, I got to wait for OP09 for uh, Eustace Kid. Uh, but I, I do think Smoker will move up a notch, just like how... Um, blue Dofi did and green uh uda just pushes straight to the front of competitive like it's it's almost on like that top tier meta deck list i think um but let, let me say it like this like to be more to be more specific i would not be surprised if any of these lists at the top won tournaments like, like big tournaments not not just locals 
I would not be surprised if any of these deck lists, or excuse me, any of these leaders at the top were to win a regional. Like, I mean, you know, Luch uh, Luchi, Luffy, Bonnie, Enel, uh, Blurple, Reju, and Gecko, and even even Nami. I will say, even like the, the, the top two on competitive here, I would not be surprised if any of these leaders won a tournament. It, I, I would not be, you know, shocked whatsoever. Um, but yeah, other than that, everything else is pretty straightforward. I'll at least mess with this area down here for the, for sleepers, like cards, leaders that are just waiting to be unlocked. It's pretty close, honestly. And again, this is going into OP08.5 at this point. I think, I do think Smoker kind of moves up to the top of this where it's like, it has a lot of potential with the cards it gets from uh, ST19. Uh, Blurple, uh, Crocs in there. We got Red Ace. I, I, I'm, gosh, guys, y'all gotta, y'all gotta tell me. We're gonna have to figure out Ace. Maybe the next like leader that I really dive into will be Ace, so I can try to figure out what people see in this leader. Because I almost put him under casual. I almost put him under casual guys, but I'm just going almost off what I've heard people say about him. Some of the hype surrounding him. I will put Vega up here, and that's about it, guys. I'm not gonna lie. I think Hody's fine where he is. The Isho. I'll, I'll even drop Isho towards the bottom of Sleeper, where it's like probably the least potential, the least amount of potential. I will. I will move Purple Yellow um, Croc up to here. Um, I, I'll move um, Lin Lin all the way down to here. Red Black Sabo, I think, has potential. I'll, I'll move Red Green Odin down as well. Zanji, I'll move up. Uh, Zanji, I think, is probably somewhere around here if we were somehow going from left to right, you know, first to last order. And Carrot, maybe put him right above right above Rebecca. Or no, right, right after Rebecca. So there you go. That's kind of where I think those should be at. And then we have, yeah, Dofi, that's fine. Ace, Ace is kind of whatever. That's all fine. Okay. Now for casual, I'm not going to spend much time on these guys. I'll at least put red green, um, red green uh, law up here at the top of casual next to black yellow Lindlin. Uh and even and then oh and then go going into OP09 now. Wait, I got I got to have myself. Sorry guys, we're about to go into OP09. Let me make sure I finish this real quick because I got Eustace. Let me put Eustace and red purple Uta here to to change very soon. Okay, all this is just fine. I'll put red green. Um, Luffy at the top of this area. We'll even put uh, Eustace Kid up here because he's really not that bad. He's just a little bit outclassed by Bonnie. Okay, and I'm not even going to mess with Let Him Cook. Okay, now, so this is basically where I see OP08.5 putting these cards. Competitive is hard to, to move these. They're just kind of all in this tier, I think. And then the meta is kind of where it is as well. I feel like any of these decks can do really well. Now, OP09. When OP09 comes into play, I see an L going down a notch and let me see what else probably i'm trying to like go through here to like move things down i'll move uh purple luffy down to the top of sleeper here because i feel like purple black luffy goes up into the meta area i think blackbeard is at least in the in like the super competitive area because i think actually i might even put him up here and move the anel down at that point because i think that blackbeard will just be a hard counter to anel it'll probably also be a pretty decent counter into um into reju as well we're gonna i think we're gonna drop uh zoro down as well sorry guys again we're talking about for op09 because i do have to mess with red purple i will move red purple uda and eustace kid up to here for now and i'll put him at the very top of sleeper because they might have some potential there uh, Lim, I just, I just have her, I'm just going to have her under casual. I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry. Uh, Buggy, I'll put under sleeper and I'll explain these all in just a second as well. I'm going to put, uh, hang on. I'm going to move some things around. Don't worry. I think, uh, Bo uh, jo uh, what's her name? Boa does fall down a notch here and hang on. I got to move a lot of stuff around. There's so many leaders now, guys. This is like overwhelming to do. Let me uh, make my face a little bit bigger on here. There we go. Okay. Cause I, I even want to move some of these down. I'm gonna I'm gonna move the uh, yellow big mom down. I'm gonna I'm gonna move the ace down. People are gonna get up, get upset about it, but it is what it is. And I think at this point, even uh, Newgate goes down here. Now now I can move some cards around. Going into OP09, I still think a lot of these are gonna be decent. I think Raju falls down a notch at this point. I think purple yellow Nico Robin is at least at the top end of competitive. And same thing probably with Purple Black Luffy. But I do see uh, Blackbeard and Shanks doing a lot of work. And we'll, we'll, I'll even move Dofi uh, down to here. And like it'll probably be something around this. 
I could see Shanks becoming one of the best decks in the format, guys. I, I can honestly see that. Maybe even Blackbeard gets next to him here. Maybe something along these lines. I don't know. We'll have to see. Because another thing, too, hang on. I'm actually, I'm even going to move this down to, um, hang, actually, hang on. Nah, I, yeah, I'm going to move, I'm going to move Calgara. We'll move this down. At this point, it will probably also push down um, Dofi. And what was I going to do? I think purple yellow pudding will actually still be very solid, but it will be hard countered into like, <laughs> it'll, it'll kind of be next to a Nell where it's like, okay, <clears throat> excuse me. I, I just think, how do I, I, th I think that Blackbeard will dictate so much going into OP09 that this is kind of how it will look. Like Shanks is going to be able to play around Blackbeard because he has Rush. Okay, he will have a lot of Rush characters that can compete with the like the not needing the on play stuff. But guys, most uh, decks that are running black, I I'm even going to drop this down to here. But but see, it's hard to say with Nico Robin. N Nico Robin and uh, Purple Black Luffy, they have a lot of on play stuff you'll probably want to run if you're trying to do the Purple Straw Hat package. And here's the one thing that's saving Dofi is he can just go so wide. You know, so, so can... Um, so can Gecko. They can just go so wide. They do lose an on-play effect, but their leader is a win attacking. So they can at least cheat cards out of their trash into play and go wide against them. And I do kind of see this shaping up. Let me also move this down. I think Red Purple, I think Red Purple Luffy becomes extremely competitive into OP09. Um, I put the, uh, yeah, here they are. I put these, I think Red Purple Luffy, uh, Red Purple Kid and Red Purple Uda become very interesting in OP09. I'll put Buggy up next to him. I think there's a lot to be said there. I'll put Lim at the top of Casual and then Chopper like kind of right behind her. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, this was from, uh, excuse me, Chopper was from OP08. But yeah, this is kind of where I see it, guys. I'm not going to lie. Like roughly here, you know, roughly hereabouts. I think a lot of people are sleeping on the idea that like, like, the, I think the best aggro deck in the format will prob probably be Red, Yellow, Bello, Betty. I'm actually going to move this forward. Hang on one second, guys. And I don't think Sabo is much far further behind it. I think, I'll think i put Sabo right behind Reju, but in front of Anel for this. Actually, I'll, I'll put it behind Pudding. That's fine. Because here, here's the thing. Red, Yellow, Sabo is an extremely technical deck that a lot of people are not going to care to master. When it's like, okay, I can just fill up the board with Bello Betty and just go 9,000s across the board so easily. You know what I mean? Technically 8,000s if you have Karasu down, right? Uh, but yeah, good stuff here. This is kind of where I see things going, especially in the meta and competitive category, going into OP09. All right? Y'all be nice in the comment section below, but I do want to know what y'all say, what, what, what y'all think about this. What are your thoughts? Is there a specific leader that I did not consider that will be moving up? But guys, I'm just telling you right now, I think the meta will largely consist of uh, Shanks with a little bit of help of uh, Goldie Roger in the new 10 cost 12k Shanks. And then um, Marshall D. Teach, which will be the 10 cost 12k Marshall D. Teach. Let me say one more thing on this before we go any further. And this is a major spoiler. Um, I think what's going to end up happening in OP09 meta is one of two things. You either have decks that go extremely wide. So actually, hang on. I, I am going to push up uh, Uda. I'm going to push Uda all the way up to around here in uh, the OP09 format. Because if you're not running a deck that goes board wide, I mean completely board wide, like like what Dofi can do and like what Gecko can technically do if you build it a little bit differently, then you're going to fall into the trap of, okay, well, Shanks is just going to go bigger than you while slowing you down early enough in the game. Or... Teach is just going to outlast you and go late enough in the game where it starts chaining 10 cost 12Ks together that are blockers. You just, you just can't get through them. Because you might be thinking like, yeah, but I'll just swing with my whole board. No, you won't. Because he locks down one character and then he's still a 10 cost 12K blocker. So if, if, if your opponent makes it to the late game, you're going to go 10 cost 12K, 10 cost 12K, 10 cost 12K. Okay, I've, I've seen it happen, guys. Like if you watch any games from the East, I watch a lot of those. And then, guys, if you're not on the Sim, or excuse me, not on the Sim, if you're not on the Discord, I post community vids in there all the time and you can see people doing it. They're just dropping 10 cost after 10 cost after 10 cost. And whoever basically has the better board state at the end wins, you know, um, Shanks has a 10 cost 12 K that lowers everything's power. We'll look at, we'll look at that to, uh, in tomorrow's video where we go over the red cards. And then whenever we go over the black cards, Blackbeard has a 10 cost 12 K that just shuts down an attack for the turn, turns off your leader's effect. And he's a 10 cost 12 K blocker. <laughs> I mean, it's just insane, you know? And that's kind of what I think the entire meta of OP09 will, will revolve around is like three things. It'll be like a, tr it'll be a pseudo triangle meta of you either have your go big decks, go wide decks, 
or I don't know if there's going to be in between, actually. Maybe it's not going to be a triangle meta. It just, it's either you go wide enough, fast enough, or you go tall enough, fast enough, or, you know, however you want to say that. We'll have to see what happens. You know, it's this is a brand new meta. We're about to be seeing the East unlock, so we'll have to see how things go. Who knows? There might be some in between there where it's like just tons and tons of aggro where it's just rush, rush, rush. Um, but that's kind of what I mean when I say go wide versus go tall. So we'll have to see. Maybe a combo deck might be able to do something. Maybe Black, Yellow, Luffy. It's it's just hard for me to... I'll, I'll actually put Black, Yellow, Luffy towards the end here. It's hard for me to see Black, Yellow, Luffy doing much better um, against against Shanks. Or excuse me, against uh, Blackbeard. Because he's just going to be like, okay, you don't have it on play. So you don't have access to Gecko Moria. And you don't have access to Sabo. Uh, I think even the 5 cost 7k Rush Ace is an on play to get Rush if you have 2 or less life than your opponent. <laughs> Or, excuse me, two or less life. So it's like, uh, I don't know, guys. That's, that's looking rough. It's it's looking rough, guys. It really is. Well, all right, guys. That's pretty much what I have to say. I'm sorry if your favorite leader is not where you want them to be. It's it's nothing personal. I don't know anyone, you know, personal like that anyway in, the, in this community. Uh, but I can tell you right now that if, if I'm preparing for the meta for OP08, I would definitely have my sights set on Bonnie. For OP08, I'd have my sights set on Bonnie, Dofi, Gecko, Uda, Luchi, and Enel and raise you and and a little bit of Nami make sure you know how to play against Nami I'm not saying you want to play Nami I'm saying you know how to play against Nami those are the big cards for OP08 going into OP09 what I predict to see from the east is some stuff up here unless who knows who knows guys like there's a reason I have this sleeper category here what if someone figures out some incredible new combo to run for like buggy or for um red blue Marco or whoever whoever and see I will say going into OP09 I'm gonna move um I'm going to move, um, what's his name here? Uh, Sanji, PRB01 Rush, uh, the, the, the Sanji that gives every card Rush that does not have it on play that costs eight or less. Or, well, once per turn, it can give uh, one. I think this card just plays around everything we just said. Like, I, I do think that this might even go into competitive at that point. Let me see something. Um, I don't want to move too much around. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see what happens. I'm just going to say this. I do expect this Sanji to actually be kind of decent going into um, going into some of the stuff we're going to see in OP09 because Blackbeard is going to dictate a lot about the meta. If you're trying to run a list that has a lot of on-play effects, <laughs> you're going to be out of luck. You know what I mean? And that's what makes Green, Yellow, Green, uh, Green, Yellow, Yamato kind of decent. They have a nice just double attack built in. If you build some type of uh, go wide version against them, maybe like some some uh, trigger, a lot like very trigger heavy uh, green yellow Yamato, you might just be able to go super wide against uh, Blackbeard and overwhelm him. Maybe, maybe not. We'll have to see what happens. That's gonna be my strategy. I'm just gonna give you guys my strategy right now with Red Yellow Sabo. If I am if I am gonna be building Red Yellow Sabo in the future, you know, going into OP09, which I'm, I'm sure I will. Um, I'll just increase my rusher my rusher count. You know what I mean? Where I just keep smashing in more and more to their board. Uh, or excuse me, into their into their life and put them on a clock where it's like, hey, if you play out uh, Whitebeard or uh, uh, Blackbeard, if you play out Marshall D. Teach, the 10 calls 12k, are you going to be able to stop three attacks this turn? You know what I mean? You might be able to stop one, but can you stop three? Because that's what you're going to have to, you know, have to do. So that's going to be my game plan against against Teach. Uh, Shanks, we'll have to see how this unfolds. I've been seeing a lot of Shanks results already from the East from uh, OnePieceTopDex.com. We'll have to see what happens there. So, all right. I'm done. I'm done with that, guys. Let's go ahead and move over to some ga to one game on the sim. We got one game on the sim here. This is a. Um, let me uh, make sure the volume is off. Speed on two X. We're good. Let me move my uh, camera over. Okay, and like I said, guys, please be uh, nice in the comment section below. If you don't agree with something, that's fine. I have no problem with someone disagreeing. Let's just please keep it respectful. That's all I ask. Okay, so we got a game here against um, against Lucci. This is Yellow and L versus Black Lucci. Uh, this is OP07 uh, format, I believe. Um, check out this list, guys. I'm running an NL list that is actually very cheap, about $150. Uh, the only expensive card in here is the Ace. I'm not running Katakuris. But this is a very heavy Sky Island version. They swing for five, swing for five. I think I took both. I'm going to swing five into the two, uh, the two K count, uh, the, the 2,000 power Spandam, play out a Ohm, which cheated out the the, uh, the Holy, and, and here we go. Now my opponent's going to swing for six. Uh, it gives me a trigger. I'm going straight down to one life. I don't care, you know, because because that's where Anel does best is that one life. They had to Ice Age, or excuse me, they had to hit me with, um, hang on, pause. It's going too fast. They had to hit me with a Suru, so they, they just lost a 2k counter in hand, and they had to use the, the leader effect to be able to pop my uh, four cost Ohm, but I'm going to return the favor and pop their uh, Brook with my Gadatsu. 
And now we're swinging five, swinging six. Your turn, bud. Okay, there goes the 2K counters. They, we, we know they've gone through two 2K counters now. They're going to swing for seven into five. I'm going to let it go. I probably should have saved that one. Because I, I, look how many zero cost 3Ks I have in hand. I, I should have saved that looking back, guys. That was a play mistake. I'm going to swing for six. I'm going to swing for six. I'm going to swing for seven. Seven into six. That way we get two cards out of their hand. That was absolutely worth it. They're going to swing five into face. I'm like, okay, what's what's going on here? I get the Frankie trigger. I'm going to trash a card from hand to uh, gain a life. Frankie is so good in the bottom two cards, guys. Swing for six. I'm like, okay, what's going on here? They're going to tip his kick, probably play out a um, yeah, Gecko Moria. They're, they're, so they're trying to get rid of my um, my Anel, but I haven't used the effect yet. So I'm just going to trash the card for my life and play out my, uh, my Rush Ace. <laughs> Seems good to me. Okay, so I, I'm doing a little bit of math here. We'll swing five into uh, four there. We will swing six into six. We'll swing five into face. We'll go seven into face. And then we'll go 10 into face, gaining a life. Your turn. Seems good, right? Pause. So I understand this is just the sim. I'm not saying this is the best Luchi player in North America, okay? But uh, this, I think this list is actually pretty decent. I'm going to show you in just a second. Because the only expensive card I'm running is, is literally that ace on the board. And that's like $25 a card. I'm not saying there's an easy replacement for that, but I did make a, a small replacement list for that. So real quick here, let's go ahead and head over to the sim. That was a very quick game, guys. The deck feels very good. I've played it a few times now. Um, this is the list. It's just a very heavy Sky Island version, and these cards are cheap, guys. The Sky Island ones. The only really expensive card in this list is um, uh, this guy. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so I'm going to run through the list real quick. So this is with Anel, of course. We're running one Sanji, four Yamato, um, an L, two Anels, four Ohm, four Gadatsu, four Satori, four Shura, four You're the One Who Should Disappear, two El Thor, three Raigo, four um, Ace, four Frank, Frankie, two Hiyoris, four Kikinojo, and four Holy. So, not bad, right? I mean, it's, it's, it's pretty decent. I just call it an L Island. Now, there's a way to make this list even more uh, budget, because this version right here is about $150 to buy every single card. Somewhere between $150 to $170 after shipping and handling and tax and all that good stuff. Probably closer to $175. But, like, if you're thinking, like, yeah, that even that's too expensive to me, but I want to play an L. I've got a version that I think is decent. Let me uh, scroll down to it. through all these decks. Here we go. Here's the budget version. I take out six cards. I add six cards. So I take out four of the, the um, what's his name? The ace. And two of the Frankie. And then I go up to Hiyori in the place of the two Frankies because I need more Land and Wano targets. And I go up three of the Momonosuke. And that might be it. I think that's it. Wait, no, two. Oh, and then I got three of the of the Neka Mamushi. Sorry. Then I also got three of the Neka Mamushi. It looks like I went down one Yamato. Let me see something real quick, guys. Let me just try to go back to it real quick. Oh, I took out a Sanji as well. So I took out a Sanji, a Yamato, four of the um, and four of the Aces, and I put in. That's what it was. That was the six cards I removed. I just moved the two Frankies over to two more Hiyoris. To, to make it budget and check this out guys let me go back to it where is it an L budget and then I went up to three Momonosuke's and the three um, Nekomamushis so the reason for that is because Momo uh, Momonosuke he can gain me life that's the only reason I decided to make this change if I'm trying to make it budget but guys this list here is like $60 so if you're trying to make like a really cheap budget list for an L you just like the way the leader plays hey I mean guys an L is Sky Island after all here's the Sky Island package yeah, it's a lot cheaper, but but here's the thing. In this version of the list, guys, check this out. Here's all the um here's all the um Land and Wano characters we can add to life with Momonosuke. First of all, Hiyori. Hiyori's actually so good. If we have if we have zero life left, or, or excuse me, one life left, okay, use Hiyori, put this as your as your last life. Like take whatever your last life is and put this as your last life, right? Now, play out Momonosuke, and you can push Hiyori back to the top of your life and get the 2K counter back and go about things that way, and you got a 6K blocker, you know, blah blah blah. But we've got so we've got three Nekomamushis, four Hiyoris, four Kikinojos, and three Yamato. Guys, this is a Land of Wano card. You can push this back to life if you need to. If you're at a stalemate on the board, okay, swing for nine and then put it back to life with Momonosuke. It's an option. I'm not saying it's the best option, but it is an option. Okay, so so really good stuff there. All right, I'm done, guys. Hope you all enjoyed that. Let me get out the, the, the patron page here on the playmats. 
Big shout out to all the people who support the channel. Thank you guys. If, if you're liking, viewing, subscribing, sharing, commenting, any of that, you're helping me out, guys. I really, really appreciate it. Uh, big shout out to all the VB Pirates Playmat supporters. I hope you guys are enjoying your mats. I hope y'all are really enjoying that. Uh, all that, um, those came out really solid. And then last but not least, the VB Pirates patron page. Thank you guys to everybody who helps me out by you know donating to the channel and, and all that good stuff. Thank you guys so much. All right, I'm done, guys. Hope y'all enjoyed. Please do not forget to like and subscribe. Until next time, guys. Peace.